Hello and welcome back. In the previous unit, we discussed copyright and intellectual properties. In this unit, we shall be discussing OER. It's no news that the world is gradually embracing the use of open license softwares, educational materials, and the likes. Many of us now use internet in our courses, and the amount of digital content is growing very fast. However, not until recently, most of the educational materials were under strict restrictions and access. The OER movement has contributed immensely in breaking down of such, which has triggered in mass access to educational resources. We will be looking at the importance and needs of OER in online learning, but before then, let's define OER. What is OER? According to the Commonwealth of Learning, CO has adopted the wider definition of open educational resources as the material offered freely and openly to use and adapt for teaching, learning, development, and research. UNESCO also defined OER as teaching, learning, and research materials in any medium, digital or otherwise, that resides in the public domain or have been released under an open license that permits no cost access, use, adaptation, redistribution by others with no or limited restrictions. Creative Commons defines OER as teaching, learning, and research materials that are either in a public domain or licensed in a manner that provides everyone with free and perpetual permission to engage in the five hours activities, which is retaining, remixing, revising, reusing, redistribution of the resources. For more on OER definition, please click on the resource section on the MOOC kit to get more definitions on OER. Now that we've defined OER, let's look at the importance of OER in online learning. We can't talk about the importance of OER without the five R's, which is retaining, remixing, revising, reusing, and redistribution. Reusing content gives the user the right to utilize it in a wild range, such as a class, study group, website, videos, and so on. You may agree with me that this is cost-effective and time-saving. OER therefore reduces the gap between different strata of society and between countries, improves the quality of education, promotes equity, and triggers more personalized learning experience. Okay. Revising content gives the user the right to adapt, adjust, modify, or alter the content. This can be translated in other languages. The function improves the quality of the resource and affords different variants of individuals to benefit from the material. This accelerates the knowledge flow and increases the number of people involved in educational process. In remixing content, the user is engaged to combine the original or revised content with another material to create something new. This stimulates continuous improvement of the content. We need to know that one of the main values of OER is that it can be used worldwide, independent of the system of the education and national curricular framework. Redistribution. Redistribution provides an enabling environment for sharing of copies of the original content, as well as that of your revision or remixes with others. With this practice, students and researchers are provided the opportunity to build on both versions and domesticate the content where necessary. The last of the hour, which is retain, expects the user to make copies of this content. This can be utilized in the classroom, study groups, as OER, and it is cost effective. Let's take a look at these courses and identify OER. Now that you know what OER is and the importance of OER, on my screen I have two different course materials, of course, from the same institution. One 
is OER while the other is copyrighted. Now, looking at it, can you please tell me which is OER and which is copyrighted? Your guess is as good as mine. Now, the material on my right hand of, of the screen is OER. Why did I say so? First of all, it has a Creative Commons license, which is the Share Alike license on the screen. You should be looking at this in Unit 4. And the document on my left has the copyright sign, which you can see here, my cursor. Of course, it also has an ISBN number, which is absent here. Now, this license has some policies and how they would want you to use their material. And it's very peculiar to most OER content because once you have an OER material, it's good you also educate the users on how best they can use your material. Now, as you can see here, they have how to reuse and attribute this content. By going through this, the user will understand how to use this content. Now, looking at the left-hand side of my screen, they said, all rights reserved. No part of this book may be produced in any form or by any means without permission in writing from the publisher. So you cannot use anything from this content, anything from this material without the permission in writing from the publisher. You know, so that has actually distinct between this content, this material by my right from the one on my left. So the OER material, this one, while well, this is a copyrighted material, so you can actually differentiate them given the signs. This is a Creative Commons license, a share alike license, attribution share alike 4.0, and while this is a copyright sign, and also has its inscription here. And this actually tells you how to use the material.